In the mid-2000s, Nickelodeon saw a variety of new Nicktoons spanning different art styles, genres, and cultures. From the mind of talented Mexican artist Jorge Gutierrez came the superhero action comedy El Tigre, regarded as one of the best Nicktoons of the era thanks to its humor, fun fight scenes, and characters. But between all these heroes and villains, which are the most heroic and which are pure evil? As usual, we'll be starting with the most pure and noble characters and working our way down. These characters are the good. The gold medal of good goes to Rodolfo Rivera, aka White Pantera. When it came to this choice, there was no other option. Rodolfo is all about being good. That's his whole thing. Of course, being a superhero helps too. Throughout the series, Rodolfo protects the citizens of Miracle City. While technically retired, it's almost a moot point as he never refuses a call to action. Rodolfo also makes sure that his son and father don't cause too much trouble. When it comes to Manny, while he does scold and punish, he also tries to teach and inspire Manny to want to do good. As for his day-to-day -day life, Rodolfo is a hard worker, kind and polite holding himself to a high moral standard. He'll sacrifice for others, but he can be too enthusiastic about being a hero. He often puts himself in serious danger. This is actually why his wife divorced him. However, Rodolfo is willing to walk away from a fight if he has to, especially if it's for the sake of his family. I would do anything for my family! Any Speaking of which, the amount of times Rodolfo has saved his family, fought for Manny, helped Manny and Puma win a race, gives him serious bonus points. Between his heroic actions and his high level of morality, he earns the title of Most Good. Getting our silver medal of good is Maria Rivera. It's no wonder that Rodolfo fell in love with a person as good as him. Even if she's no full-time superhero, Maria is still a good force. She uses both her talent as a mariachi singer and her knowledge as a librarian to spread joy and facts. While she didn't approve of Rodolfo's dangerous hero career and is often exasperated with her ex, Maria never badmouths Rodolfo and will try to work with him. This allows the two of them to remain good friends and co-parents. As a mother, Maria is that perfect mix of nurturing and supportive, without being too overprotective. Despite her freakouts, Maria allows Manny to keep being El Tigre and gives her encouragement. Maria also believes in the good of others. She tried to reform three Miracle City villains. While only one decided to become good, it was a noble effort. There's also her connection to the Plata Pelagrosa glove. She hated how reckless the glove made her and how it eventually warped her mind. Lock that glove back up and let us never speak of it again! However, Maria tried to work with the glove and even repaired it when it was damaged. This is another example of Maria's kindness, a trait that easily earns her a high ranking. The Bronze Medal of Good goes to Toshiro Watanabe, aka Cyber Sumo. Being the son of the Japanese hero, the Seventh Samurai, Toshiro hoped to be as great as his father. Unfortunately, Toshiro took goodness to a level that even Rodolfo found to be extreme. Instead of just focusing on being good or heroic, Toshiro hyper-focused on being polite and never rude. I am sorry, food. I must eat you." Because of this, he found it hard to fight bad guys, not having any assertiveness. Add in the difficulties he had when it came to controlling his cyber sumo mecha, it was easy to see that Toshiro was having a rough time following in his father's footsteps. But thanks to Manny and Frida interfering, Toshiro eventually found that assertiveness. Too bad it came out in the form of him being angry about Manny and his rude betrayal. Although Toshiro could defeat a villain, proving his potential, we have to wonder if he's too aggressive. He's now enthusiastic about bringing other bad guys to justice. Because this was the only episode that featured Toshiro, it's hard to say. We just hope that he managed to find some sort of balance eventually. Next is Zebra Donkey. Zebra Donkey is the happy-go-lucky mascot of Manny's middle school. Everyone loves Zebra Donkey. He's talented, friendly, cute, and full of school spirit. Thankfully, these traits don't change, even after he dies and is brought back as a zombie. Zebra Donkey is also protective of his students. He was willing to destroy Sartana's mystic guitar, as well as himself, if it meant defeating Sartana's army of skeletons and saving the students. Although Zebra Donkey is brought back by the kids' love for him, he doesn't do much outside of this episode. Unfortunately, this meant that we couldn't put Zebra Donkey any higher, but we were still happy to acknowledge him. Now we have Raul, Manny's mustache. It may be strange to count a sentient mustache as a character, but Raul qualifies. Manny originally wanted a mustache to look more like an adult. This is an adult's only trash can! Move along! 
Raul, however, was no ordinary mustache. Because he was alive, he became like an actual friend to Manny, instead of just being a tool or a facial feature. He helped Manny understand that he wasn't ready for the responsibilities of being an adult. Raul briefly turns evil in his debut episode, but that was only due to Dr. Chipotle Jr.'s forced interference, so it doesn't really count, since that interference was taken away. Raul went back to being the best mustache ever. In later appearances, Raul became Miracle City Police's undercover mustache, showing that he helps others outside of Manny and brings criminals to justice. Despite all this, we had to bring Raul down a few spots for forcing Manny to be his wingman. However, this instance wasn't bad enough to overshadow his other good deeds, so he remains in our top five. Next is the wannabe sidekick, Dobby, aka the albino burrito. Dobby is a fanboy, enthralled with the idea of superheroes, and especially El Tigre. Dobby will do anything for Manny, even taking the blame for stuff Manny did, though only if it means that he'll get to have El Tigre as his sidekick for a week in return. Being so much younger than the other characters, Dobby is hyper and gullible and trusting, especially of Manny. But although his superhero methods may seem laughable, like something out of a child's game of pretend, they usually turn out to be pretty darn powerful. I mean, look at his exploding pinata of punishment, or his sombrero dance of doom. But while Davi may not be malicious, he can still be overbearing, annoying, and frustrating. We can't blame Manny for blowing up at him when Davi forced him to wear a moose costume. However, with him being so young, we're cutting him slack. We also admire that he wants to be a hero and doesn't just care about the fame he would get from the title. For that, we were able to give him a couple of points. Next is the main character, Manny Rivera, aka El Tigre. We know this may be controversial, as Manny is meant to be seen as a character caught in the middle of good and evil. Perfect for the gray area, right? However, for as much trouble as Manny gets into, he does a lot of good. Throughout the series, Manny saves the day and protects the people of Miracle City. In fact, he's one of the few heroes that's able to defeat Sartana, since he allows himself to be sneaky and clever, turning what could be seen as villainous traits into heroic ones. Though he may have a bad habit of lying and will occasionally steal or be selfish, there are other lines that Manny won't cross. He won't betray his family, and he won't hurt innocent people outside of small pranks. Additionally, whenever Manny does something seriously wrong, like disappointing his father or hurting his best friend, Manny feels guilty and tries to make up for it. This is gonna be awesome if we survive! He was willing to sacrifice for others, whether it's putting himself in danger to defeat a bad guy or giving up his Lux Pod so that a dog can go home. Manny tries to do good before giving in to temptation. That shows that while he may not always make the right choices, it's not as if he does so maliciously. He's just a kid that has a hard time turning down something fun. Although Manny gets into trouble a lot and creates his own problems, Manny isn't a bad kid. He's mischievous and a bit reckless. He can even be a jerk. Like when he manipulated Dobby into doing his chores or when he kept ditching Frida to hang out with Black Cuervo. He also once used Cuervo's affections for him to his advantage, using her as an informant. That was awful, which he thankfully acknowledges and doesn't try to take advantage of her feelings again. I'm sorry I treated you so lousy, but I'm gonna make it up to you. Despite some awful misdeeds, Manny has a good heart. He'll often do things his way and is in no way a traditional hero, but we still feel that he belongs in the good tier regardless. Finishing off the good tier, we have El Cucharon. He was one of three villains, the others being El Oso and Dr. Chipotle Sr., that Maria tried to reform. The other two were just playing along with the whole reformation, and in actuality were planning on robbing the Miracle City meant. However, El Cucharon is actually touched by Maria's attempts to reform him. Miss Maria was the first person that was ever nice to me. Because of this, he decides to become a good guy and uses his powers to free Manny and eventually trap the other villains. It was El Cucharon's actions that were able to show that while Maria's attempts at reforming villains weren't completely successful, they weren't pointless either. He tells her that he's decided to abandon his villain lifestyle and enroll in cooking school, all because of her encouragement. It's a sweet moment and El Cucharon actually keeps this vow throughout the rest of the series. However, since this is his only major role, and we don't see any other of his good or heroic actions, we felt that we had to put him at the bottom of our good tier. That's it for the good characters, now it's time to descend into neutral territory. This is the gray area. Starting off the gray area, we have the Chupacabra, Chewy. For being a goat eater, he sure is cute. Almost instantly, Chewie was able to bond with Manny, becoming both a pet and a friend. 
albeit a friend that had a bad chewing habit. We think it's some kind of deerfish monkey. Although he's a chupacabra and can cause destruction to the local goat population, Chewy never becomes monstrous. He remains cute and friendly. He even saves Manny when he wrestles the Chipotle Cabra into the Miracle City volcano, seemingly sacrificing himself. Although we couldn't put Chewy into the good tier due to his goat-eating nature, we acknowledge that it's just something he does because goats are the only thing he eats, and not something he does maliciously, which stops him from being put any lower. I just hope we can find him something to eat. Under Chewy, we have the original El Tigre. The Rivera family is filled with heroes and villains, however, the one who started the Rivera bloodline never figured out which side to be on, which drove him crazy. Even in the afterlife, the original El Tigre is still trying to figure out whether to be good or evil, causing him to be isolated from the rest of his feuding family. While he is able to focus, he also has a split personality, swapping from good-natured guy to a maniacally laughing bad guy. We also have to note that El Tigre's son was Dark Leopard, the Rivera family's first villain. Considering his son became a villain, we're not sure if the original El Tigre was that great of a parent either. As flawed as he may seem, El Tigre has his moments of good, especially when it came to helping Manny. Despite all of his hangups, he still cared about his family and encouraged Manny in the battle against Sartana. We will go down fighting together! Afterwards, he would comfort Manny and tell him not to worry too much about his future or picking a side. For how much he's able to help, the original El Tigre deserved to be on the higher end of the gray tier. Next is Frida. What puts Frida so low isn't just her actions. She'll try to push Manny into doing bad things, even when Manny isn't sure about them. While Frida doesn't have the strongest moral compass, we can't call her evil or heartless. She's still there for Manny most of the time, and when Frida crosses that line and does something awful, she regrets it. She regretted lying to her father while at the police cadet academy. She also regretted the embarrassing song she wrote about El Tigre and how she disregarded his feelings. Even at her worst, when she was choosing to hang out with Silverwolf and ditched Manny, she still chose Manny without any hesitation. El Tigre? She was willing to make up for ruining their concert plans. For Frida, being bad is just harmless fun, and when it comes to her and her best friend, she's only interested in the two of them having a good time, even if they have to break a few rules to do it. Delving into the more negative side of Grey, next is Billy, aka the Cactus Kid. Billy was a small-time villain from a small town who had dreams of moving to Miracle City and becoming a true supervillain. What makes Billy unique is that his so-called victims from his hometown are happy to submit to his crimes. They actually supported his villainy and wished him the best of luck in his ventures. Y'all are the best. Now hand over your loot. It's strange, almost as strange as Billy's parents being two regular cacti. For being evil, Billy is pretty cheerful. He's enthusiastic about evil, but lacks the talent. He can be sensitive as well. However, after discovering his powers had better use, Cactus Kid used them against those who wronged or underestimated him. He then embraced villainy for all that it was worth. However, it should be noted that Billy only started being overly aggressive after he heard Puma and Manny mocking him behind his back. But after this, Billy thanked the Riveras for helping him unlock a new power and become a villain, while at the same time swearing a vendetta against them. Eh, well, at least he said thanks. Billy's another strange case. Much like Dobby, we want to cut him slack for being a kid, especially since he had a whole town encouraging him to be evil. And this is the only episode that features him, so we don't get to see him do anything truly evil. Unfortunately, there isn't enough to push him into the bad tier. Sorry, Cactus Kid. Time for another surprise. Next is Puma Loco. Let us be clear. In terms of status, yes, Puma Loco is a villain. But it's like Zangief said, just because Puma's a bad guy doesn't make him a bad guy. While he'll commit robberies, lie, and try to push his grandson into the villain career path, Puma is still a family man. While they don't always understand each other and will often argue, Puma loves his son and helps him out and protects him. Puma also loves Manny and has sacrificed for both him and Rodolfo. He even gave up a romantic relationship with Sartana, choosing to save his family despite still being in love with her. Much like Manny, there are also certain lines that he won't cross. The extent of his evil is only stealing and lying. 
When he fights, it's usually alongside his family, rather than against them. If he betrays them, like when he temporarily attended Manny's school as a cover to steal an artifact, Puma tries to make up for it. He never tried to kill or destroy anybody, something that the other villains have done countless times. It may be a low bar to clear, but it counts for something. While he doesn't do enough to be a true good guy, he does just enough to get into the gray tier. Next up is the League of Alliance Society, consisting of Silver Sombrero, Cosmic Cleopatra, and the Industrialist. They're tricky to rank, as they only appeared once, but they make a big first impression. The League of Alliance Society is a group of globe-trotting superheroes that Rodolfo has looked up to since childhood. As such, it's implied that they've done many heroic deeds. They are the best of the best. They come to Miracle City to hunt down the legendary Dragon Worm. However, instead of recruiting White Pantera, they recruit El Tigre. It's later revealed that the only reason why they wanted El Tigre was to use him as bait. Finally, the dragon has taken our bait. Given that Manny is 13 years old, that's messed up. To be fair, they had planned to defeat the dragon worm before it could eat Manny. Obviously, that didn't work out, and even if it had, they were putting a kid in danger without giving him a heads up. It's arrogant and short-sighted, and Rodolfo tells them off for this. While we can't put them in the bad tier since they are legitimate heroes, this dented their reputation as good people. Finishing off this section, we have Giant Robot Sanchez. He is exactly what his name implies. He's a giant robot bandito, often stealing things and crushing buildings. In any other case, he'd essentially be put on the level of a rampaging monster. However, his actions in the episode Mech Daddy push him out of the bad tier. In that episode, Manny and Frida temporarily take control of Sanchez after accidentally shutting him down. It's then that they learn that Sanchez lives on an island with his robot wife and kids. He's actually a loving husband and father. After Manny and Frida spend the day looking after his kids and pretending to be Sanchez, Sanchez wakes up and actually decides to spare the two, especially after learning that their actions help strengthen the bond between him and his kids. Instead of destroying them, he thanks them and throws them off the island and back to Miracle City. After this episode, Sanchez doesn't attack the city anymore, and it's implied that he's given up on his evil ways. He even cheers on the Riveras in the final episode, so it turns out maybe a giant robot bandito can change his programming. Alright, that wraps up the gray area. Time to take a look at all of our Miracle City baddies. These characters are the bad to evil. Starting off the bad guys, it's El Oso. Many years ago, El Oso was abandoned in the forest when he was a baby, after being left behind on an orphanage camping trip. He soon met a family of bears that reluctantly took him in. When he fell in love with the princess of the bear kingdom, he became a villain to have the money to support his bear wife. Eh, El Oso isn't the sharpest knife in the block. In fact, he's probably the dumbest villain of the series, though he's also one of the strongest. He robs banks and fights off White Pantera and El Tigre. Occasionally, he resorted to worse crimes, like when he once tried to kidnap Maria, but mostly he sticks to bank robbing. Give me your wallet and leave the money in them! He's more of a thug or someone misguided than a criminal mastermind. Even so, he beats up kids like Manny. He finds fun and enjoyment in being evil, given how often he's laughing at the heroes whenever they fail. He later says that robbing banks is his actual true love. It's clear that even if he is misguided, he doesn't have a secret soft spot. Next is the Golden Eagle Twins. For a while, the Golden Eagle Twins were the pride of Miracle City, so much so that Rodolfo considered them to be heroic role models for Manny. However, unlike the League of Alliance Society that did good before they fell from grace, we're not sure if these twins did any good as heroes. The Golden Eagle Twins used their status and the city's admiration to get away with everything, from stealing valuables to putting innocent people at risk. Thanks for the reward. Farewell, good citizen. They tried to obliterate the Miracle City Community Park with a laser to build their own motocross park. The only thing they care about is living a life of luxury. They also decide to attack Manny after destroying all their stuff, nearly killing him and Frida and putting Manny in the hospital. And they also blame him for everything. They're bad kids. As for why they're near the top of our bad tier, it's more of a case of them only having one episode versus the other villains in this tier who had multiple. Up next, we have Sergio, aka Senor Siniestro. We're cutting Sergio slack considering the circumstances and how he became a villain. 
Having moved from Italy, Sergio's size and demeanor caused others to see him as a dorky kid. He was excited to be in what he thought would be like the Old West with cowboys and banditos. In an attempt to be friendly, Manny tried to show Sergio to the elementary school, only for Sergio to tell him that they were both in the same grade. For this accidental humiliation, Sergio swore revenge against Manny and created a Senor Siniestro persona. In his robotic disguise, Senor Siniestro possesses super strength, the ability to fly, and high-tech devastating weaponry. He isn't afraid of using these weapons against his classmates. He once tried to force the other kids into hard labor to create his broomy horse Mark 7. Another time, he tried to get many expelled from school. This includes various attacks and putting a bus full of children in danger. Outside of his robotic disguise, Sergio can still be evil. He'll play innocent and manipulate others with his fake niceties. He also has a crush on Frida, which can qualify as obsessive and possessive. Not a crime, technically, but, you know, that's, that's creepy, man. Although we feel bad for him getting embarrassed on his first day of school, that embarrassment doesn't excuse any of his actions. Just under him is Zoe, aka Black Cuervo. Zoe, much like the rest of her family, is a parallel to Manny and the Rivera family. The only difference is that Manny still may have a moral compass. On the other hand, Zoe's fine with being evil and hurts others. Her rivalry with Frida and her tendency to mess with her is solid proof of that. While she can be annoyed by her mother and grandmother's bitterness, Zoe follows the family business. She has fun being bad, and it's this badness that briefly attracted Manny to her alter ego in the first place. Although these two have a fairly complicated relationship, not even her crush on El Tigre can stop Zoe from decimating him when she's angry. But we can't entirely blame her for that. If romance can't tempt this bird onto the side of good, we don't have much hope for redemption for her. Finishing off this trio, we have Dr. Chipotle Jr. In terms of villains who are his own age, Dr. Chipotle Jr. is Manny's greatest rival. Much like Zoe, he comes from a family of supervillains. He thus has a hatred for the Riveras, Manny especially. We meet again. And you are... Although he isn't above causing chaos and using his creations to steal, Chipotle's goal is to take Manny's El Tigre belt. He once tricked Manny into buying his altered guacamole, which turned Rodolfo and Puma into guacamole zombies. Another time, he pretended to work together with Manny so that they could both give their dads what they wanted for Father's Day, but quickly double-crossed him. As we mentioned earlier, he also tried to destroy Manny by turning Raul evil. Like Sergio, he also has a creepy crush on Frida. He may seem like a silly villain, with a silly voice provided by the always funny Richard Horvitz. <laughs> Spin the However, Dr. Chipotle Jr. can be a threat with all his various gadgets and guacamole-related creations. He treats his creations as minions only. He doesn't even sympathize with or care about them. His ultimate goal is not only world domination, but getting the Riveras out of the way once and for all. But while Dr. Chipotle Jr. is one of the most well-known enemies of El Tigre, he falls a few rankings shy of being the most evil. Outside of the top three is El Mal Verde. El Mal Verde is the largest supervillain of all time. While he isn't the most feared, he's easily considered to be the most dangerous bandito of all time. Except for White Pantera and El Tigre, every hero that's tried to fight him has been eaten alive. What makes El Mal Verde worse than the average rampaging monster is that he's sentient and attacks and eats heroes for fun, not because he needs to. He is heartless. El Mal Verde occasionally comes down from his mountain to steal from Miracle City, as evidenced by his wallet full of stolen bags of money. Of course, in comparison to eating people, massive theft might not seem like much, but it still adds to his crimes. The only reason why he isn't in our bottom three is that our last few baddies are just that bad. Earning our bronze medal of evil is the Titanium Titan. The Titanium Titan was once a sidekick to White Pantera, as the two of them were best friends and partners. However, the Titan became jealous once Maria and later Manny came into Rodolfo's life. After a failed attempt at being a solo hero, the Titan decided that the best course of action would be to kill Manny. He hopes once again to have his former best friend to himself. In these attempts, he'll use excruciating methods of murder, showing his ruthlessness despite Manny only being a kid. Between his jealousy and isolation, the Titanium Titan isn't just malicious, but borderline insane. Now be a good boy and let me crush you! In his first appearance, he kidnapped Frida to lure Manny to his volcano hideout. 
Then in two other episodes, the Titan lied and manipulated others for his schemes. He first tried pretending that he turned over a new leaf and wanted to work with Manny as well as Rodolfo. The truth is, he had been planning to feed Manny to a giant squid. Later on, he disguised himself as Silver Wolf to break up Manny and Frida's friendship to make Manny as miserable as he was when Rodolfo left him. When that scheme didn't work, he once again tried to kill both Manny and Frida. At his worst, the Titanium is cruel, psychotic, and Machiavellian, unable to let go of the past. While he may have been a hero, he's done too much evil at this point to be given any credit for those past heroic deeds. The Silver Medal of Evil goes to Django of the Dead. As the grandson of someone like Sartana, it shouldn't be any surprise that Django is this high, despite only having one major appearance. Although young, Django shows a talent for evil, as well as an ability to tap into a person's insecurities. Django noticed Manny's feelings about his father and grandfather treating him like a kid. Are you in this for them or for yourself? Django can manipulate these feelings. He made Manny feel like he was the only one he could listen to because he understood how Manny felt and added to Manny's frustration. This eventually pushed him towards actually fighting his family in the final round. Although Django cannot completely convince him to give up his family, he still pushes Manny far. Also, the plan to fake Sartana's retirement and set up the competition as a means to capture and destroy all of her competition was all his idea. An evil prodigy indeed. For his sneakiness and manipulation tactics, as well as his aggression, Django earned the title of second most evil. It should be no surprise who's coming next. Our gold medal of evil is going to Sartana of the Dead. Sartana is the most powerful and feared of all the Miracle City villains. She can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Riveras and other villains like El Mal Verde. No matter how many times she's defeated, Sartana keeps coming back, with each evil scheme being worse than the last. Going down the list, she once captured all of Miracle City's heroes in a convention center so that the city's evildoers could run free. She's frequently kidnapped Frida and has attacked innocent schoolchildren. She also tried to kill every other villain in Miracle City. On the Day of the Dead, she used her mystic guitar to bring the forgotten dead to life in an attempt to destroy Miracle City for good. We'll do this old school! And the list goes on and on. Sartana is manipulative, vengeful, and practically heartless, with the only person she truly cares about being her grandson. Not even her feelings for Puma Loco, someone she was romantically involved with, is enough for her to be merciful. She was even willing to let Puma's family be crushed in order to have a mystic gem as part of her wedding ring. For how much damage and devastation she's caused throughout the series, we're happy to call Sartana the most evil character in El Tigre. With that said, let's wrap this video up with our Sinner Medals. We're gonna give the Darwin Medal to none other than Manny Rivera. For as many lessons that he learns throughout the series, he sure doesn't retain many of them. Moving on to the Gluttony Medal, we're giving it to El Mal Verde for his pretty gluttonous diet of superheroes that dare to challenge him. As for the Envy Medal, it was an easy decision to give it to the Titanium Titan. When you're jealous of a 13-year-old's relationship with his dad, you have definitely take Envy to the next level. With all the nominees for the Wrath Medal, we felt that Sergio deserved it the most. With how irrational his hatred of Manny is, with him only hating him because of an embarrassing mistake, this medal just seemed fitting for him. We're giving the Greed Medal to El Oso. The guy literally made a career out of just robbing banks, despite living a simple bear life. Sounds greedy to us. Finally, the Lust Medal is going to go to Rodolfo Rivera. Although he may respect his wife's decision to leave, he definitely hasn't gotten over her. He is still very attracted to her, and it is not subtle. Alright guys, that's it. Let us know in the comment section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.